How are you guys doing? I know it's been some time, like two or three episodes, I haven't taken the opportunity to do an actual voiceover, so I thought this might be a good one right here on this high intensity chest workout. In this chest workout, I take away, after this point in my diet, I've taken out all barbell movements and I've kept it only in dumbbell movements. So I started out with an incline dumbbell press, doing six repetitions with a heavy, in my, in my eyes at least, heavy 30 kilos per arm, that's 65 pounds per arm. And then after those six, Repetition that you see here, I dropped the weight immediately down to 24 kilos where I essentially do another 8 repetitions for a total of 14. The first 6 repetitions function to exhaust the muscle and then the next 14 function to um, kind of actually induce the, hypertro the hypertrophy that is associated with the muscle even though due to the caloric deficit most likely muscle won't be built in this case. Um, however, the whole point of this workout is to deplete glycogen through the high intensity part of the workout and as a result lead to fat being used for the, the regeneration of the muscle in the later stages after the workout. Here you see I did again the same kind of drop set mentality in my um, flies. You see that when I go down I twist my um, my hands out in order to optimize the stretch in my chest. And when I bring them back together, I join the dumbbells and I take a moment to squeeze my chest together to work also that inner part of the chest. Very much like the dumbbell uh, bench press, the incline dumbbell bench press, this uh, flies session also contains some, um, how do you call it, some drop setting. I did uh, 15 kilos and then fold it with 12 kilos doing 15 repetitions in each, as you will see right here. Um, and then essentially I followed this on with the, oh, with the seated incline um, chest press and finished it off with some cable crossovers. Um, generally my chest is actually one of the parts of my body that is a bit more gifted to me because of the swimming that I did for two years and also because I was a thing, I feel like I was born with a bigger chest ever since I was a little kid. But my shoulders and my arms are the part of my body that really lacks and falls behind. Um, anyhow, um, so I finish my incline fly press and then I move on into my uh, seated chest press again doing drop set here. You'll see that in a moment. I'm still just finishing off my flies. Um, so I do a drop set where I go from 30 from 45 kilos. I know it's not very much, but it's really going to the 15 repetition. There you go. And I'm going 45 and then. I go into the 35 or the 25 where essentially I um, hit another 15 to 20 repetitions if I remember well enough. And in one of the really important things here is as you go, I don't go too narrow. My hands are fairly wide and that's because the wider they are, the better the stretch in your shoulder and the smaller the participation of your front delt. At the same time, when I reach the top, I try to, to twist my biceps a bit in order to squeeze my chest in the middle. And this will get that inner pump that a lot of people try to get, but they can't get sometimes because they just forget to squeeze. That's how the inner part or the lateral part of your chest actually grows. Um, and then I topped it off with um, some cable crossovers. Again, focusing on squeezing my, my chest at the top. To really get that good squeeze but in this case I didn't do a drop set as opposed to the other three I did what is called an FST7. FST7 is a type of training that was first found by Hanny Raymond of Eva Jane Nutrition and essentially do seven sets of approximately eight repetitions each set. Then I moved on doing some bicep curls. I did an easy bar uh, super set which focused on a pronated followed by a supernated barbell curl to 10 repetitions in each literally just burning out my muscle again depleting the glycogen stores um, followed that with a little um, dumbbell curl hum hammer hammer curl with the dumbbells literally just to finish it off I did five sets in each of these for a total of 10 sets thank you guys for watching hope you enjoy the rest of the video What's up guys, just finished the workout, um, the chest, biceps, and actually now we're at King's Cross Station, um, right here, and I'm just waiting for a friend to go grab a coffee before she leaves to go home, back to Greece, and after that we're back in the gym for some fasted cardio, fasted, I mean not exactly fasted because it wasn't in the morning, but fasted because I haven't eaten since I did the workout, probably hit some BCAs and then we're in for the workout. 
the cardio. And yeah, that'll be it exactly for today. How's it going, Mikente? We're back in the house. Post-workout meal, about an hour and a half post-workout. So what are we doing here? Um, we're working with 100, uh, 200 grams of chicken together with 100 grams of asparagus and 50 grams of courgettes together with, let me just pick it up. Here we go, 95 grams of brown rice. So this is what we're doing for lunch. Then we're gonna probably chill, work on the new blog, and then we're hitting cardio. 40 minutes of low intensity. Actually, I might do high intensity today because I did low intensity two days ago. So that's the plan. Let's do it. What's up, guys? It's cardio time, and you know we're gonna go hit some high intensity interval training. Uh, by now, I think there should be an article on www.molecularphysique.com, link is in the description box below, where essentially I, I kind of display the advantages of high intensity interval cardio as opposed to low intensity. I'm personally a much bigger fan of high intensity, and I've given the, by the, sci the, the scientist side of this and why I believe it's better and how it can help you with your actual working out. Anyway, so what do we do for pre-cardio? As you know, I'm cutting, I'm going towards the end. So I'm going all out with my calorie consumption, so I burn a lot of calories, and I do want to make sure I get as much muscle spared. And in the previous video, I did, show, did talk a bit about the value of BCAA. So what I do is I like to make a BCAA drink before I go, um, where what I do is I add about 100 milliliters of this zero, no, no added sugar um, juice. Essentially, it also has been sweetened with stevia. It does not contain neither aspartate nor sucralose, which you find in a lot of um, amino acid supplements. So I do 100 ml of this, followed with 7 grams of BCAA. This is the BSN DNA series. And then I top it up with water, and it's essentially as if just having a nicely flavored um, amino acid supplement. So this basically is a summer fruit flavor. It's really good. Um, it's for 250 ml, it's 4 calories, I put about 100 ml, so that's 1.6, 1.7 calories. It's practically nothing as opposed to having something like an intro workout supplement, which is like 30 to 40 calories, which also contains a lot of sucralose, which some studies have associated it with cancer. I'm not a big fan of that, but anyway. Um, so, 100 ml of this. Top it up with water. Just do that dilute flavor is really strong, and also so you can have something to drink on the way to the gym. Because I'm gonna go do cardio today at the gym, or I'm gonna do a triple training. And finish it off with here BCAAs. We're gonna put five, eight grams of BCA. Pre-cardio, it's been about three and a half hours since the last time I ate, so you know I don't I do want to make sure it gets muscle sparing. So anyway guys, then just close it up, maybe put a bit more water, just to dilute it a bit more, and you're done. Right to go hit cardio. Let's do it. probably know I didn't do high intensity the gym was closed because it's Sunday I forgot and at 7 p.m. the gym closes so I go there 7 15 and it was closed so I chose to do low intensity cardio and um, you know um, we have a park really near my house which is called Regents Park and it's quite big near I me mean, like 20 minute run away so I run there and I run a bit inside and then I came back and you know there's some really great places to go in there and I did a bit of low intensity cardio there even though I was hoping to do high intensity and now I'm just gonna learn my body, burn up some calories, gonna go um, do some work, and then we're gonna go have the second to last meal for the day. Yeah. Good morning, guys. As you saw, this last episode finished, this actually, this episode finished a bit abruptly, but the problem is that I was gonna add another little clip at the end, 
but because of essentially time constraints, I didn't want to make it too long, so I reserved that clip for the last, for the next video, which is coming out very soon. Um, so I'm kind of working like that. I want to stay within the range of like 10 to 15 minute maximum for each video. So I hope you enjoyed it. It was a bit kind of like a summary of my day when cutting, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.